First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 in your King James Bible says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, Gentiles believed on in the world, received up into glory. What is the mystery of godliness? That God was manifest in the flesh. You say, well, that just means that Jesus is God. Well, then why would it be a mystery? Did you ever think about that? If Jesus is God, God the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, why would it be called a mystery that Jesus, as God, was manifest in the flesh? No, the mystery is that God the Father was manifest in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. You say, well, oh, come on. I... It's a mystery. You understand? You go with the Roman Catholic Trinity where you have these three different bodies, each one having a body, soul, and spirit apparently. You know, three different entities and they somehow somehow are one. Three different gods, but they're just one God. doesn't even make any sense. It's crazy. But how is that a mystery? You see? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God. And one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. One God. Is Jesus Christ God or is he not? Well, yes, but he's Jesus God, Jesus, the, the, God the Son and, and God the Father. Well, then there's two gods. And the Holy Spirit, that's another one, that's three. The Catholic Trinity is a pagan concept. All right. Isaiah chapter 44 Show you this ties into the Old Testament as well. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee um, from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God, God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Unless you believe in the Catholic Trinity, then you got two other ones. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 through 6. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they uh, may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I mean, I don't understand why people can't get that. There's one God. I mean, no, there's there's three different gods. No, there isn't. And I get this thing, you know, it's a, well, the Trinity is just basic doctrine. You should be able to get that. It's easy to understand. Well, if it's easy to understand, then it's not the mystery of godliness. You have a different Godhead. You have a different Trinity. Okay? These Catholics, they come along all the time. Oh, the, the Trinity, it's so easy to understand. You know why they're saying that? Because lost people created their system of understanding. Well, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. How could Jesus be seated at the right hand of God the Father? And how could he be praying to God the Father? It doesn't make sense. Well, then there must be three separate gods. Well, doesn't that contradict? Well, no, because there has to be three separate gods. They've created their own God, is the whole thing. See, how is it a mystery of godliness? How is, a how is it a great mystery? Let me say it that way. How is it a great mystery when you can just say, well, there's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. There's no mystery there. The mystery that's great is when you have the fullness of the Godhead in one body. How does that split off? How does it work? How does he, you know, and you just go, I have no idea. What does that mean? Great is the mystery of godliness. You see? But the papists come along, these false, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, they come along and they say, well, the, the, the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. <laughs> you can't have three be one. Three separate things be one. How do you do that? You know? No, they are body, soul, spirit. But you get up to heaven, you're going to see one. Jesus is here on the earth. God was manifest in the flesh. 
say, I don't understand. Yeah, it's a great mystery, isn't it? Don't get sidetracked by these people, okay? These Catholic Trinitarians that come along and they try to, to, to mess you up. Somebody comes out and they say Trinity or something like that. I'm not going to condemn them. I mean, I've said Trinity different times. The true, true biblical you know, thing is Godhead. There, the word Trinity is not a King James Bible word. Um, so you got to be careful, you know. I mean, you know, the word rapture comes from Jerome's Latin Vulgate and whatever. Okay, but it describes the event that's going to happen in the future, you know. Again, whatever. Some of these people, they just pick at every little single thing out there. It's ridiculous. But what I'm trying to get through to you is if there are these three different gods, that's trying to simplify the Godhead. trying to understand the Godhead with man's reasoning. And what do you end up doing? You make a grave image. And, you know, you get the Catholics and they put up their statues to their Trinity, their Holy Trinity, and you get the Baptists. Oh, that's wicked. That's, that's an idol and everything else. Okay, do you disagree with what they're depicting? If they're honest, they'll have to say, no, I don't. You believe that the Godhead looks like that? Jesus sitting here, God the Father sitting there, and the little dove above him? Is that what you believe? I mean, let me ask you that. All these little fakers out there that are coming out and stuff and, well, Dillinger doesn't understand the Trinity, blah, blah, blah. Is that the image that you believe in? Jesus sitting here, God the Father sitting here, and the Holy Spirit flying above him as a dove. Is that the depiction of your Trinity? Or Godhead or whatever you want to try to call it? If it is, there's no mystery there. So, please stick to the scriptures, brethren. Don't fall for all this pagan nonsense of this Catholic Trinity thing, three different gods. You know, and then they try to say, 1 John 5, 7 proves what we teach. It doesn't prove one thing of what they teach. It proves what I teach and what the Bible teaches. Okay? Body, soul, and spirit. They're three, and they're one. I am made in the image of God. I have a body. I have a soul. I have a spirit. At death... My soul and spirit will separate from my body, the body of my flesh. And the Bible talks about we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. How does that work? My soul is seeing things in heaven. I'm connected to Jesus Christ up in heaven. And yet my, my body of flesh, I can't see what's going on in heaven right now. I have no idea what's going on up there. So what's all this stuff? It's a mystery. You see? The mystery of godliness is great. We can't understand all this stuff. Unless you're a Catholic. And you try to make your own little false god system of three gods that are three gods but just one god. You know. And just a little challenge I'd like to issue to any of these people out there, these Catholic Trinity people. Um, you say, well, you know, we can't, okay, we can't show, show one verse where Jesus is called God the Son. And they'll try to you know, twist some scriptures around and things like this. Uh, but, 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 you know, okay, let me just ask you one thing. Can you please show me one verse of scripture where Jesus says, I am not the Father? You can't. So, uh, to the people out there that are saved, love the Lord, don't fall for this Catholic Trinity stuff.